Numbers chapter 9 The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, Make the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time, at twilight on the fourteenth day of this month, in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover, and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the fourteenth day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. But some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day, because they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day, and said to Moses, We have become unclean because of a dead body. But why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, Wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, When any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body, or are away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover but they are to do it on the fourteenth day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if anyone who is ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from their people for not presenting the Lord's offering at the appointed time. They will bear the consequences of their sin. A foreigner residing among you is also to celebrate the Lord's Passover in accordance with its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for both the foreigner and the native-born. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law, was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites set up camp. At the Lord's command the Israelites set out, and at his command they set up camp. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle for only a few days. At the Lord's command they would set up camp, and then at his command they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days, or a month, or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they set up camp and at the Lord's command they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. Numbers chapter 10 The Lord said to Moses, Make two trumpets of hammered silver, and use them for calling the community together and for the camps to set out. When both are sounded, the whole community is to assemble before you at the entrance to the tent of meeting. If only one is sounded, the leaders, the heads of the clans of Israel, are to assemble before you. When a trumpet blast is sounded, the tribes camping on the east are to set out. At the sounding of a second blast, the camps on the south are to set out. The blast will be the signal for setting out. To gather the assembly, blow the trumpets, but not with the signal for setting out. The sons of Aaron, the priests, are to blow the trumpets. 
This is to be a lasting ordinance for you and the generations to come. When you go into battle in your own land against an enemy who is oppressing you, sound a blast on the trumpets. Then you will be remembered by the Lord your God and rescued from your enemies. Also at your times of rejoicing, your appointed festivals and new moon feasts, you are to sound the trumpets over your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, and they will be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord, your God. On the twentieth day of the second month of the second year, the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle of the covenant law. Then the Israelites set out from the desert of Sinai and travelled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert of Paran. They set out this first time at the Lord's command through Moses. The divisions of the camp of Judah went first, under their standard. Nachshon, son of Aminadab, was in command. Lethanel, son of Zuah, was over the division of the tribe of Issachar. And Elihab, son of Helon, was over the division of the tribe of Zebulon. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the Gershonites and Merarites who carried it set out. The divisions of the camp of Reuben went next under their standard. Elizur, son of Shedeur, was in command. Shalumiel, son of Zuri Shedei, was over the division of the tribe of Simeon, and Eliasaph, son of Duel, was over the division of the tribe of Gad. Then the Kohathites set out carrying the holy things. The tabernacle was to be set up before they arrived. The divisions of the camp of Ephraim went next under their standard. Elishema, son of Amihud, was in command. Gamaliel, son of Pedasa, was over the division of the tribe of Manasseh, and Abida, son of Gideoni, was over the division of the tribe of Benjamin. Finally, as the rear guard for all the units, the divisions of the camp of Dan set out under their standards. Ahiezer, son of Amishadei, was in command. Pegiel, son of Ochran, was over the division of the tribe of Asher. And Ahira, son of Enan, was over the division of the tribe of Naphtali. This was the order of march for the Israelite divisions as they set out. Now Moses said to Hobab, son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We're setting out for the place about which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well, for the Lord has promised good things to Israel. He answered, No, I will not go. I am going back to my own land and my own people. But Moses said, Please do not leave us. You know where we should camp in the wilderness, and you can be our eyes. If you come with us, we will share with you whatever good things the Lord gives us. So they set out from the mountain of the Lord and travelled for three days. The ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them during those three days to find them a place to rest. The cloud of the Lord was over them by day when they set out from the camp. Whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Rise up, Lord, may your enemies be scattered, may your foes flee before you. Whenever it came to rest, he said, Return, Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. Psalm 45 My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. You are the most excellent of men, and your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Clothe yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously in the cause of truth, humility, and justice. Let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. Let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies. Let the nations fall beneath your feet. Your throne, O God, will last for ever and ever. 
a scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. From palaces adorned with ivory, the music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honored women. At your right hand is the royal bride in gold of Ophir. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honor him, for he is your lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. People of wealth will seek your favor. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments she is led to the king. Her virgin companions follow her, those brought to be with her. Led with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers. You will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations. Therefore the nations will praise you forever and ever.